asking me. So the important cases from respiratory is pneumonia, asthma, COPD excarbation, lung cancer, TB, pulmonary embolism, pneumothorax, hemothorax, hydrothorax, pleural effusion. So these are the pictures from the respiratory system. Then moving on to the cardiovascular, you need to know acute coronary syndrome, which will include acute coronary artery syndrome like STEMI, NSTEMI, unstable angina. So see all of the pictures. How does the ECG looks like? And then angina, stable. How does the ECG of angina stable? Then pericarditis, acute and chronic both. Then heart failure, cardiomyopathy, HOCM more importantly. Then uh, arrhythmias, especially the atrial fibrillation, syncope. I mean, mostly syncope comes up with the orthostatic hypotension. So it will come up with the BP or something like that. So yeah, hypertension, peripheral vascular disease. How does the DVT look like? How does the pleural uh, arterial uh, ulcer look like? So those are the pictures. Then peripheral, uh, yeah, I'll read that. Hard block, so one, two, three, all of these, you need to know hard block and at which level you are going to start the treatment. Then uh, in the gastrointestinal, you are going to uh, uh, see acute intestinal obstruction for small, large bowel obstruction, uh, the, you know, those pyloric stenosis, so, uh, perforation of the peptic ulcer. So how does the perforation of peptic ulcer like air and the diaphragm thing? Then esophageal carcinoma. How does the esophageal carcinoma look like? Esophageal web. Then diabetic ketoacidosis would come up with some scenario where there is some like having a skin condition or something like that. Uh, then splenic rupture. It could also come up with the air and the diaphragm thing. Uh, ischemic colitis. Uh, then colon can carcinoma, then uh, in nephrology, renal stones, renal carcinoma, infection, uh, infection of like pyelonephritis, but it, not, it will not come up with the picture. So just, you know, then mm, in neurology, to see the tumors of the brain, Cran uh, craniopharyngioma, uh, prolactinoma, then moving on to the, uh, yeah, as I mentioned in the musculoskeleton, you need to know how does the skin conditions of the rheumatic arthritis look like? How does the skin condition of SLE look like? So those things. Uh, even the scleroderma, how does the thick skin, those things look like? Then uh, how does the lump of the neck look like? If it's a thyroid, if it's a lymph node swelling, so you need to know both of them. Obviously, they will give you in the scenario that what is typically features of those things. But on the same time, you need to see how does they look like. Like a middle swelling is thyroid and the side swelling is lymph node or something else. Then moving on to gyne, you need to know STIs, especially their excretion. How does it look like? Clue cells and uh, all those things. Then uh, uh, what else? Uh, especially the, all the diseases of the cervix, uh, like vaginal atrophy, cervical cancer, uh, all of those things, like uh, strawberry cervix. Don't forget the strawberry cervix. Uh, then in pediatrics, see child abuse. How does the child abuse look like? Different from the bruising, like ITP or those things. And how does the burning of the hands or when the abuse is there, so it should be symmetrical, all of those features. Yes. So that's pretty much it. I mean, there might be some more that I'm missing, but that's pretty much it. You need to see all of these features. And then coming to the derma, every single thing, nails diseases, skin diseases, hair diseases, every single thing. I won't say to miss anything, even the nail diseases, like how does the chylonychia look like? How does the splinter hemorrhages look like? So all of those things. Okay. So let's start with this medicine uh, here. So the first thing is acute STEMI. So you need to know which one is lateral, which one is inferior, which one is anteroceptal, or which one is lateral. So on the basis of the leads, you will see it's an acute STMI. So very, very important. You need to know at which location it is and the name that if it's a one V1, V2, V3, V4, then it's an anterior. If it's a V5, it's V6, then it's lateral. So you need to know on the position. So on the basis of that, you have to write down acute which part of the STEMI is it. Then atrial fibrillation, there is no P wave. 
and then uh, irregularly irregular rhythm. So this is very like blur vision, but you need to know at least it will give you a little hint that atrial fibrillation is also very important. So don't forget the ECG of atrial fibrillation. Then acute pericarditis, another one, like where is the uh, ST elevation and PR depression. So you need to know this ST elevation and the reversible uh, proportion. So see the uh, ECGs of acute one and chronic one, both of them. Okay. Yes, Dr. Mariam, do you raise the hand? Okay, so this one here, air fluid level lung cavity, it's basically aspiration here. So this is important as well, okay? I will just answer all of the question in the end. Uh, let me just finish it up because there are so many of them. So let's just finish it up and then you can write down the questions and we will discuss it later on. So this is air under diaphragm or air fluid level or lung cavity. It's very, very, very important. Okay, so this one, upper lobe infiltration here and the uh, diagnosis is TB. So it will come along with this here. Then this one here, bilateral infiltration here. According to the question, you will see what the diagnosis would be. So this is bilateral infiltration. Let me just see. Okay, so bi bilateral infiltration here and here as well. So according to the diagnosis, you will see what is the condition and according to that. Then moving on to the next one, horizontal line like transient tachypnea of the newborn here. Just don't forget that transient tachypnea of newborn when I was covering the pediatrics, it's important as well. So don't forget the TPN. Transient tachypnea of the new, newborn here. This is the horizontal line. Then rheumatoid arthritis. Also, how does the skin like hands look like on the basis of x-ray and the hands uh, of like somebody's coming with a bitchen or so on or whatsoever. Even how does it look like a gross, in, uh, like you don't have to go through x-ray to make your diagnosis. This is another thing, but uh, you need to know how does it actually look like in the real life as well. Okay, so moving on to the next one, osteoarthritis. Here, this one is the fusion osteophyte. So see how does it look like? It's very, very important. Iron deficiency anemia, I just put on two or three pictures here of how does the hypochromic cells look like. Hereditary spherocytosis, spherocytes here. Here. Then moving on to the next one, megaloblastic, bigger cells with the multi uh, nuclear. Then sickle cell anemia, schistocytes here. Then falciparum malaria. This is not important, but I just put it here to be on like, you know. Then leukemia. I mean, these things are not very important. I'm just putting it here to be on the safe side. So if some picture or something like that could come, so you know a little bit about it. So Reed Steinberg cells with lymphoma. Then moving on to the next one, this one, okay, here, conjunctivitis. Also look, how does the keratitis look like? Also see how does the acute clo uh, angle closure glaucoma look like? I also see how does acute iatitis look like. Also, their features are important as well. Also, see how does the skin presentation or how does the eye look like with this, okay? So viral keratitis, bacterial keratitis, all of those conditions, see how does they look like when they are giving you. So they might can give you the scenario here where they will giving you this picture and asking you what is the discharge. So even with the discharge, you can tell this is a bacterial and this is having the red uh, conjunctiva, so it is conjunctivitis, okay? Then moving on to the surgery. Here, epidural hematoma, a pie. Also, subdural hematoma is important as well. So, third nerve palsy, complete tosses, eye down and out. So, dilated pupils, which is not responsive to light and accommodation. So, if somebody wants the PDF, it's totally okay. You, I will send the like PDF in the group. Okay, so don't worry about that. Then the fourth nerve palsy, double vision going down. And so this is just for you to know uh, if a picture can come uh, or a scenario can come. So how does it look like just to be on the safe side? Maybe they can just give you that this is the presentation of the child. Now you have to tell what is the condition. So you have to know how does it look like from the basis of the 
this I presentation. Six nerve palsy, lateral movement of nystagmus. Okay. Then moving on to the next one, air under diaphragm here, some perforation. Okay, air under diaphragm. This one here, this one here. Then moving on to the next one, hemothorax. All of this is here, hemothorax. Okay, so this is how hemothorax look like. The next will be hemothorax. So this is also a hemothorax picture. You can see trachea is midline. This is a aortic knob. This is the uh, like X-ray. So it's just a, a little bit of hint how you are going to see or present in NAC is quite different. You have to write down all the normal things, then you have to tell them abnormal things. So those who are uh, preparing for that, see how you are going to present just on the basis of the X-ray. They can give you an X-ray and ask you to elaborate it or interpret it. So you need to explain the uh, normal findings and the abnormal findings as well by telling that this is an x-ray of uh, the right side of the chest or front side of the chest front view and it shows this 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 is normal this is not normal and this goes along with my uh, diagnosis of hemothorax so that's how you are going to present so make your flow with that then here picalit appendix stone here I just put it here. This is also something you can be tested. We tell it. Okay. Here. Coffee bean sign. Fecal volvulus. Coffee bean sign. As you can see, it looks like coffee here. Coffee bean sign. They won't give you any x ray or ultrasound which doesn't go with your presentation. The Ultrasound or X-ray will be very nice and elaborative and it will help you to make the diagnosis. Then cecal volvulus here. Also making a coffee bean sign here. Inside in the middle there is. Okay. So then moving on to the next one. This is a hyatated cyst. It is also important. How does it look like? It's a, like a bigger one. And it will also look like this here. I dated cyst. Then this is also a high dated cyst. There you go. So high dated cyst is at liver. There you go. This is another presentation. So see which one is ultrasound, which one is x-ray, which one is uh, CT scan. I just put everything together. So just to be on the thing. There you go. This one here, this one here. Now this one, green stick fracture of the child here. The bones are broken here. Green stick fracture, this one. Now moving on to the next one, tibial fracture. TPL. Next one, slipped capital femoral epiphysis, key feet. This is how, there you go. This thing, you can see this is acetabulum and this one is the femur head. And this one is here, okay? Then what else? next is, this is femur neck fracture. So this one is the femur head and the neck got distorted from this one here. There you go. If you can see it properly, this one here. Moving on to the next one, infant hip dysplasia. So here, okay. Infant hip dysplasia, so it is displaced. Now somebody wants to see what is this? Any diagnosis you wanna make? Any diagnosis somebody wanna make? Just like a puncture or in a open fracture. Open fracture? Looks like. It is an open fracture. So see, 
from outside you have to see how does the open fracture look like you can see this is how the open fracture is okay very good doctor so now moving on to the next one this is also an open fracture why i put it here you have to see an x-ray but you also need to know this open fracture as well i i mean i didn't make this <laughs> pdf somebody else make it for me so yeah they put it here okay so open fracture this is how it looks like now this is this open fracture from outside open fracture from inside so it's important and how you need are uh, going to uh, manage this one is also important so kindly see that okay mm -hmm. then up down so this is a reassuring pattern like where the normal range is 120 to 180 so here 140 so this is like below this one so it is basically within 120 to 140 i think this is 180 here so if this is below 180 so it's a normal range of 120 to 160 the contractions and this one okay then this one like fetal bradycardia as this is 80, then moving on to the next one is 60. You can see it from here. Okay. Baseline fetal bradycardia. Prolonged deceleration, going on for so long. So the depth and duration correlate with the insult. Going all the way and then going up. Yeah, prolonged deceleration. It's important. You need to know the condition along with it. I think it is uteroplacental insufficiency. Then uh, early deceleration. Here, fetal heart rate. Early deceleration is kind of, I think, normal. Yeah, fetal head compromise or anemia, I think. So you uh, go and see the conditions which is linked with this one. So they can ask you or give you this uh, presentation and ask you what is the condition or what is the next step you will do. So if you know the condition, what is linked with it, on the basis of that, you will manage it very easily. Okay. So this is early deceleration. So, and this is variable deceleration. It is not making any link with the contractions. Here, here. This one is here, but there is no here. Then here, this is not this one. So early deceleration causes compression of the head, uter uh, uterine contraction, late causes placental insufficiency, variable causes uh, umbilical cord compression. So this is what it's written here. Early, uterine, the late, all of this. So this one. then the swear variable, it is unlikely they will test swear variable because it's something very like a life-threatening condition. So the next step in this one definitely will be like delivery or whatsoever. So you just have to see, it is very unlikely that we will be able to diagnose it. So there you go. Then late deceleration as it's here, and then this is here. Here, the, the pattern is not along with it. This is one step far further from this one. If you can make the line from here to here, this is not in line. This one is one step away to go from here. So this is basically late deacceleration. So this is acceleration CTG, just an acceleration CTG. So their only management would be reassurance. This is a sinusoidal fetal anemia. So this one here, 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 here. This is a sinusoidal pattern. Now this one, if somebody wants to make a diagnosis of this one. I'm not sure, Pitts uh, jigger has syndrome? Just think of something simple. Why don't you uh, like- This is like uh, lip lickings by, uh, there is citrus or something like that. If you like- mm -hmm. Dermatitis. Uh, melasma. <laughs> So it is kind of melasma, but obviously in the gravidarum, they will give you in the scenario that she's a, like a pregnant lady or, you know, whatsoever. So this will give you a little hint, hint of that. So this is how it looks like. Okay. Then here, this is basically snowstorm appearance. Here. 
these are very very important so kindly like you know uh, if you cannot keep on remembering then just keep on scrolling it every day so you will get familiar with these things okay hi hi that's it for more yes then there is another picture of snowstorm appearance complete form pregnancy complete molar pregnancy this is an empty sac basically abortion fully inside is hollow there is nothing inside then an embryonic pregnancy here what do you think it it could be like i know it's hard to see what actually the structure is so let's just see colonoscopic polyp so this is basically a colonoscopy so this is colon's inside and there is a polyp okay so it's it's okay if you cannot see the structure they will definitely in the scenario give you what is going on and then on the basis of what the presentation is being done so this is how it look like now you have to tell it's not like they're just going to give you the picture and ask you to see which organ or which part of the body is it okay then here this is a urethral carpal okay what do you think it would be procedure hysteroscopy finding is uterine polyp this is a polyp this is how it looks like i mean something uh, i mean one of my friend she went to exam and she came back she couldn't see or understand the picture so make sure you get familiarized with the words or the structure what it is and what how does it looks different from the normal so kindly see the normal pictures then you will be able to see what is abnormal okay so this is also one of the very great thing that you can do is look into the normal then you will be able to see what is abnormal there so very easy for you i mean obviously you cannot see every unhigh yield thing that is basically a uh, disease but if you know the normal then you will be able to see what is abnormal there so this is a clue cells bacterial vaginosis so now a little reflexes like this is rooting reflex so you need to know normal at which age it's uh, it's regresses and how long it stays there so you are able to see that the patient is not sorry the child has no problem so having a newborn baby having this kind of uh, reflex is totally normal all you have to do is reassurance the fa family then the step reflex this is leukoporia so you have to check the corneal reflex to check out the leukoporia and you find out the leukoporia refer to the ophthalmologist you are not going to keep the baby the next one distended abdomen the high sprung disease how does it look like from outside how does it look like from inside both are important this one here distended abdomen high sprung disease the noise calling purpura hsp this is the purpuras candidia if you can see it's in the folds it can also present in the diaper area mostly presented on that side so see how does the candida looks like from the different one this is candida in tree intertrigo their first line management is important their long term management is important as well and also their prevention how you are going to talk about their counseling when the family is going home so hand foot and mouth disease the reassurance give a lot of fluid and do reassurance because this is viral impetigo the yellow honey colored crystals you are going to give mupirocin 
okay failure to thrive the table is very like uh, you know here not very good but you have to see the dots if it's going along the way at least it should be above the 50th percentile or it should be within these ranges if it's below then the patient is or the child is failure to thrive here this is going below the lines you can see it is keep on going if it, there is two here and the third one goes up it means that it, it's totally okay the child has a problem then it resolved and now it's totally okay but if it's keep on going like that then you have to see that the child might need help so this is basically failure to thrive to kindly see how does the